Thank you. First of all, I'm <coughs> from Pan America. <coughs> Joe, can you take the mask off? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I am from Pan America. However, I don't represent Pan America here. Whatever I say in my own words, not Pan America. As we heard a bit about new laws in Russia against the media, and Lourdes, my good friend who I met at the United Nations 30 years ago, just said that those uh, issues are also with us here in the West. And that's really what I want to talk about in particular, about the news uh, website that I run that was begun in 1995 by Robert Perry, who was an Associated Press investigative reporter uh, who broke the biggest Iran-Contra stories. But his stories were suppressed by his editors. He went to Newsweek magazine, the same thing happened. So he began this website in 1995 called Consortium News, a consortium of journalists whose articles also were being repressed by their editors. And I was one of those in 2011. I was working at the Wall Street Journal at the United Nations, and they wouldn't publish certain articles of mine, so I gave them to Bob Perry. He published them. I also covered for the Daily Telegraph, the Daily Mail, the Boston Globe, the Sunday Times investigative reporter. Uh, during those years, Bob died uh, four years ago. I became editor in 2018. What's happened to us is that PayPal, who are the, the money transferring system, have banned us permanently. There's an organization in the U.S. called NewsGuard. On its board is a former CIA and NSA director, a former NATO secretary general. They have partnerships with the Pentagon and the State Department. Why do I mention these two? Because NewsGuard is coming after us. Yeah. PayPal, why did they block us? Because in their user agreement it says we can't provide false uh, information. Hmm. NewsGuard is accusing us of publishing false information. We must uh, correct it before I even get a chance to answer their questions. What is the false information that we're reporting? Well, I think many people here in this room might disagree with me, but as Udor said, this is the whole point of free speech. We can disagree, but you can't shut people down from saying that. And what we have written are the causes of this war. This is what journalism should do. Analyze rationally the causes of this war. Most historians believe Versailles was one of the, uh, the onerous conditions on Germany, one of the reasons for the Second World War and the rise of Nazism. It's, nobody thinks an historian is excusing Nazi Germany for saying that. And yet we're just trying to talk about what the causes of this war are. And we're being blamed for being Putin puppets, for being Kremlin stooges, and PayPal will no longer let us use their system to raise money and NewsGuard is going to give us a mark and put it in libraries across the world that we are disinformation. What's the dis disinformation? There was a coup in 2014 in Kiev and the US was behind it and there's smoking gun evidence of that. It's a lie to say otherwise. Nazism began in the 40s in Ukraine with the Bandera movement that killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of Poles and Jews. The U.S. worked with them at the time, and Nazism was involved in the 2014 coup in the war against Donbass, and the Donbass people rebelled against that coup. And uh, you cannot talk about how Russia offered treaties in December, how the Minsk Accords were never implemented. The U.S. set a trap for Russia. This is what we write. They wanted this invasion so they could launch this economic and internet and information war against Russia. The ultimate aim is to bring down Putin, which is against international law. And we cannot stand for this if we are for freedom of speech. It has to be universal. If only some speech is protected, none of it is. Thank you. Good.